Hey guys, TomBoy601, and today we're doing what I'm going to call a first look of the Osterjutland, aka the Ostergotland, aka the new pan-European tier 7 boat destroyer thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about it. Right now, the game in front of you, we have none of the upgrades as I am currently working my way through this new boat. So, uh, as the stats stand, it is not fully upgraded. We will... Uh, end up boosting both the base health, the range on those main guns, and additionally the uh, speed, and I believe the range of the torpedoes as well. So there are there are some big changes coming to this boat, but we won't uh, talk about them quite yet. So Oyster Jutland, uh, how is it? What is it? Does it perform? Should you be going for it? Um, honestly, it kind of feels like the Oland. It, it very much feels like a a tier seven tech tree version of the tier six premium ship, and honestly, I'm okay with that. Oland was a is a very strong and a very powerful destroyer. It does a very good job at what it does. Uh, it has a very unique play style, and to have that just available one tier up in the tech tree, I think overall is really good. Just because you know, it does suck when certain play styles get locked behind. Uh, behind the tech tree. Anyway, Kleber pops up right here. One of the things you'll notice about Osterjutland is the main guns. We have a very nice 2.7 second reload on the main guns. We are currently running Stig Hansen, so we're not even building into the guns. And that is the, the positive of Osterjutland is that you don't have to build into the guns, but you still have a very respectable, uh, you still have a very respectable fire rate in one that you can kind of put up a fight to the majority of, of the other destroyers out, out there. What is Oyster Jotland's kind of thing? Well, long range torpedoes, sustained damage, keeping certain targets pinned down, uh, being out there spotting and knowing when to push and when not to push. Uh, I think the one big theme that you need to learn with the pan-European line now that we have the full line in effect is you, it is the advanced destroyer kind of line. It used to be the French and I think the, the French are, are even harder to play. I think definitely the pan, the pan Europeans are a bit easier to play uh, over the French, but this is definitely a advanced line of, you need to understand where the enemy is. You need to understand how battles usually flow. You need to understand a bunch of the mechanics to be successful in Oyster Jutland and the rest of the tier seven and the rest of the pan Europeans, just because uh, you don't have that smoke as a get out of jail free card. Anyway, Kleber pushes into us. I do have to kind of feel bad for him because I feel like he must think we cheated. Because if you if you notice there, we sent uh, torpedoes out to that Montana. That's one of the nice things you can do with, with this boat is send those super long range torpedoes. And they were like going straight for him. And we did that before with the other Montana torpedoes. And I do feel bad because he, he must think we were cheating. I promise, D dear Kleber, man, we were not cheating. Anyways, uh, that's that's the fun thing that you get to do in Oyster Jotland is send out these torps. Uh, when you have uh, enemies that are holding certain areas, you can easily kind of flank around, use your long-range torpedoes. And because of the incredibly narrow angle, uh, the, the amount of dispersion on these torpedoes, you can very much say, oh, look, there's a bow in Alaska over there. I'm going to go ahead, drop some torpedoes just towards him, and uh, we will we will see how, how those land. Like, you, you can have the confidence that even if you don't make a hit, you can definitely make some scare and get, get enemies to move and kind of manipulate them in the ways that you need to get them to go. Uh, base stats that we should probably go over, like I said, 2.7 second reload on the guns, 15.7 uh, second 180 time, and that's with the turret traverse mod going in there. I think you could use the main battery dispersion one. Uh, you it does, it does not suffer from the Skone problem of being able to outturn itself. Oh, there's one torpedo hit, how about the rest? And, uh, here we go. Four hits. Oh, yeah, that's a good hit. Um, it doesn't suffer from that. So if you wanted to use dispersion, you could. 
I just still think uh, 50, uh, the base 180 time on those the turret traverse is not that great. 1700 HE uh, damage with a 7% chance to set fire. Not the greatest, but it's still rather respectable. Here we go, lining up a, a, a run on this Yamato. Alaska, we can see uh, out in the back still flooding out. Sadly, we don't get the kill. That's something that you will kind of get used to. I've had the the games with Oyster Jotland are feast or famine. A lot of times you will do um, small or, you know, even huge amounts of damage, do these big hits. Uh, as you can see, we, we do get some some nice, nice hits, um, but a lot of the time you're not the one who ends up delivering the finishing blow to a lot of the ships. You are there as a support person. You are there spotting. You are there. Uh, getting in the key damage over time, and it's usually someone someone else's alpha strike in their main salvo that ends up taking out enemy ships, not your long damage over time, which is kind of what these boats specialize in. The As far as what kind of boat Oyster Yotland kind of falls into, it is definitely more of a torp boat. That's why we have Stig Hansen as the commander on here. Kind of key facts about the, tor the torpedoes. It's very much like Skone, but you get the extra... Get one more torpedo in each salvo, which hey, another ten thousand uh, alpha strike within that within that salvo is very excellent. Um, but you're not going to be taking out battleships, right? We just hit that Yamato with almost two full salvos of torpedoes, and he still has he still has health for days. So don't expect uh, don't expect just because you're you're going to get a good chunk of torpedo hits to be the one that ends certain ships' days. Uh, reload on the Torps is 73 seconds, which is nice and quick. Base damage is 10,925. Nice. It's it's a bit up. It's it's definitely a bonus for the class. Range on it, 12 kilometers, and uh, they go 80 knots. And I believe when you update upgrade them, they go uh, 90 knots. Yeah, that's right. It's I think they maintain the 12 kilometer range, but they boost up to 90 knot speed with an additional uh, with a little bit added detectability to kind of compensate for that. Overall, I, I, I look forward to continuing to grind out Oyster Yotland. Uh, it is definitely a fun ship. I won't bore you with the rest of this match because, well, uh, you know, we, we don't do anything. We kind of just sail, uh, kind of zoning out this, this Vanguard and another Vanguard. It's not exciting. We'll just cut to the end screen. Uh, decent game. Like I said, it's kind of just a first look at Oyster Yotland. Kind of get, give you an idea of what the boat is like to play. We'll have a full review once I get this thing fully upgraded. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.